if you're a SHIB holder, the people's the people's token, you can now pay for Uber Eats. So Shiba Inu holders can now use the crypto to pay for Uber Eats. Uber Eats does not accept direct crypto payments at the moment. Uber Eats, the online food delivering platform, joins the bandwagon as it starts accepting the dog-themed altcoin Shiba Inu as a form of payment after launching nationwide delivery in the U.S. Acceptance of Shiba Inu as payment continues to grow with Uber Eats as the latest company to embrace the popular altcoin. Shipholders can now pay for their food orders using the dog-themed crypto asset through BitPay, according to the Bitcoin payment service provider's announcement on Twitter over the weekend. At the moment, Uber Eats does not accept direct crypto payments, but the payment service provider offers several alternatives that allow crypto holders to use SHIB, also other ones because it's BitPay, like Bitcoin, for example. Uh, this includes using BitPay gift cards, BitPay cards, and Menufi. BitPay described prepaid gift cards as fast and easy ways for users to convert their crypto into prepaid gift cards that allow them to spend it just like cash at a wide list of merchants across a variety of categories. Another way of paying for Uber Eats using crypto is by purchasing gift cards for restaurants that accept cryptocurrency or just having a crypto.com credit card and putting the credit card number in, but you know, is what it is. But perhaps the most convenient way to use the BitPay card since it enables users to spend their crypto anywhere that MasterCard is accepted. According to BitPay, the card allows users to pay in Shiba Inu and other accepted cryptocurrencies to DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, and any other with food delivery service, including food deliveries from local restaurants with their own delivery service. BitPay also collaborated with the restaurant online ordering system Menufy to make it easy for users to pay for deliveries and takeout to local restaurants and other fast food chains directly from their crypto wallet. That's what we want to see direct from the crypto wallet, right? The latest announcement came at the heels of Uber Eats launching a nationwide delivery all over the U.S. We're committed to being a platform that allows consumers to get anything and finding new and diverse ways to help merchants grow their business, an Uber spokesperson said in a recent interview. SHIB is one of the casualties of the latest crypto meltdown, but unlike other crypto assets, it did not wallow during the tumble, but immediately bounced back. And they say as of now, it was trading at 0.73% at this number with a 24-hour volume of 210,944,320 based on the latest data from CoinMarketCap. Anyways, some sort of adoption. It's kind of weird how like some of these adoption things are like, well, you could kind of already do that already. BitPay kind of made it easy. Direct payment from the wallet is obviously going to be easier, um, but not your keys, not your crypto. Don't store a majority of your crypto and services like that. And now's probably not the time to be buying uh, Uber Eats with cryptocurrency either. Just saying, probably don't want to be doing that. Everybody during the bull run was kind of like, super hot on crypto right and then all of their stuff that is surrounding crypto that they were planning on is coming out late during the bear market it's kind of hilarious and the most recent example that has turned into a failure is there have been no bids on chevy's first nft even though it came with a free corvette z06 Chevy's first foray into non-fungible tokens was a non-fungible dud. The automaker netted zero bids for its first NFT during an auction last month, month, even though the digital drawing came with a free 2023 Corvette Z06, according to the Corvette blogger. The NFT, which depicts a lime green Corvette Z06 blasting through a cyberpunk landscape, was created by artist Nick Sulo, who goes by Xsulo online. The winning bidder would have also received a unique minted green Corvette Z06, which will be the only car painted in that color, and the option code RFN, which will for which will forever associate the car with the NFT auction. And the Corvette's VIN number will be in binary because NFTs are digital and computers use binary to get it. I mean, that does look really cool going through that cyberpunk city. I'm not going to lie. I'll just go ahead and uh, take this Corvette here. There we go. Right click, save as, done. But alas, there was no winner to ascribe to the blockchain because my, Mighty Chevy struck out. The automaker was only accepting bids in Ethereum. Most NFTs are purchased using Ethereum. 
the price of which has been extremely volatile in the recent weeks. The cryptocurrency has dropped more than 64% since April 1st, while the most lauded NFTs have seen their floor price, price for the lowest one on the market, drop more than 70%. The auction was held from June 20th to June 24th. Super Rare, the NFT marketplace that oversaw the auction, tweeted on June 24th that it would reopen bids for 24 hours because some users missed the window. But apparently that didn't work. The auction closed yet again with zero bids. Basically, they pulled a Morbius. Trevor Tompkins, a pro spokesperson for Chevy, shrugged off the disappointment in a statement to Corvette Blogger saying, quote, our first step into Web3 has been educational and we will continue to explore ways to leverage technology to benefit our customers, end quote, Tompkins said. Look, I don't classify NFTs as Web3. Just, just, I just want to point that out. Uh, of course, the real loser in this story isn't Chevy, which will no doubt move on from their experience a little older and a little wiser about the volatility of Web3. The real loser is Donors Choose, an educational uh, education charity which was designed by Chevy as a beneficiary of the auction. This could serve as a warning to other automakers who are tempted to dip their toes into the NFT marketplace, swim at your own risk. Here's the other thing about NFTs that we have to basically call out that I don't think like a lot of people want to acknowledge, and that's the first mover problem, especially in the NFT marketplace, but in crypto in general your first mover for programmable contracts, you know, you got Ethereum, they're kind of the top dog. Then, you know, secondary to that for the NFT marketplace, I'd never heard of Super Rare. You know, I think you if, you, if they really wanted to launch this and get, you know, people that are interested in NFTs, interested in this NFT, you would want to launch on a marketplace that has that first mover advantage where everybody is browsing and that would be something like OpenSea. Not to condone OpenSea, I'm just saying from a launch perspective for a large company like this to miss that very clear fact is pretty sad. The, I mean, obviously Super Rare probably had some sort of deal with them and they were gonna use it to build up their marketplace, but not a good idea. There is also other options, you know, Rarible could have worked um, and the such, but also the type of people looking at Corvettes, if they're looking at, um, just kind of extrapolating here. I don't know. Just a couple ideas. They're probably older generations that more than likely are watching, you know, traditional media who are very down on cryptocurrency right now. And for good reason, because of the price, right? And if you are looking at going into, you know, purchase an NFT at probably a pretty significant price point for the hopes of winning, you know, essentially a special edition Corvette, you have to consider the fact that when you put that money in, if it's too volatile, that value of the ETH that you put in drops and then you have to put even more in so that you can meet the price of the NFT for the auction. And you're kind of fighting a losing battle if the price continues to drop and that's going to cause some fear surrounding it. Unfortunately, I think that this does carry through to the rest of the NFT marketplace and has been carrying through to the rest of the NFT marketplace, which is of course affecting Ethereum mining profitability because a lot of the big days that we were getting from mining were coming from NFT launches and things like ApeCoin, Board Ape Yacht Club, Mutant Ape Block Yacht Club, all these big NFT launches would happen and it would drive the transaction number up, which would drive the fees up, which would then pay out to the miners. And that's part of the reason why as the NFT marketplace kind of gets destroyed in you know your traditional markets and people aren't as interested in it, the mining profitability goes down. And it doesn't help that other things have been put into place like EIP 1559 that are burning part of the rewards as well. So the, unfortunately we see network security already dropping with Ethereum as the hash rate starts to go down. And I think that will continue as more miners get priced out. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.